Well, take your Bibles this morning and turn with me to, in the Old Testament, Isaiah 7 through 9, and then find your place in Matthew 21 in the New Testament. If you search the Scriptures, you will discover that there are, <clears throat> excuse me, are over a hundred different names and titles of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've chosen four of His most prominent names and titles to do a Christmas series over the next few weeks. He is Jesus. He is Messiah. He is Lord. But first... In this first message of the four-part series, and Brother John, I thought you were going to steal my message a while ago, but let's learn a little Hebrew together. Are you ready, church? I want everybody to say with me these three words. Im, im, say anu, anu, and el. Let's put it together. Im, anu, el. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. It means, of course, God with us. Turn to your wife and say, Wanda, I can barely speak English, and the pastor's got us speaking Hebrew this morning. <laughs> In Hebrew, we read it from right to left. Look at this next screen. Literally, Em with a new us El God. In Hebrew, it literally reads with us. God. Now, trivia question. Did you notice in our songs this morning that it was always spelled with an E? Why is it sometimes spelled with an E and sometimes spelled with an I? Now, don't Google this. <laughs> Why is that? Anytime you see it with the E, Emmanuel, it's from the Greek and Latin form of the word. But anytime you see it with the I, the Yod, is from the Hebrew form of the word. So since Hebrew came first, we're going to stick with the Hebrew, all right? So we're going to call it Emmanuel spelled with an I. Now, I hope you have your Bibles open to Isaiah chapter 7 through 9. Let's do a little historical background study. We're going to eventually be at Isaiah 7, 14, a very familiar passage of Scripture. But first, let's get the context. After Solomon reigned, remember what happened to Israel. It split into two parts. Israel, the ten tribes to the north, and Judah, the two tribes of Judah and Benjamin to the south. Everybody remember their Bible history? Now, fast forward to the kings of Judah, the southern kingdom, till we get to the twelfth king, his name is Ahaz, A-H-A-Z, not Ahab, he was in the north, Ahaz, but he also was not so great a king. But what was Isaiah writing about? Isaiah was writing during the days of King Ahaz because the ten tribes of Israel to the north were joining up with the Syrians over to their west and they were going to form an alliance together to go after the big, mighty Assyrians. Are you still with me, church? So the Israel, the ten tribes to the north, and the Syrians, they contact the king of Judah, Ahaz, and said, we want you to join our alliance. And he says, no, I'm not going to join your alliance because what if I join this alliance and you guys turn on me and you defeat Judah and the house and the lineage of King David. But Isaiah said to Ahaz, Isaiah the prophet, he says, Ahaz, listen, you don't have to worry because God is going to give you a sign that you will be able... By, by the way, uh, let's put this up for our screen people. This alliance or this war, uh, the, as they were coming after Judah, was called the syro Ephraimite War. Ephraim was also called Israel, the syro Ephraimite War. Isaiah said, God's going to give you a sign. What will be that sign that you will make it, that the house and lineage of David will make it? Look at Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord Himself will give you a sign... Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Em Anu El. 
with us God, Emmanuel. This virgin-born son will be the sign that God is with you against your enemies. Now, historically, not only did this enemy alliance of Israel and Syria not be able to overcome Judah, but finally the mighty Assyrians came in and in 722 B.C. wiped out Israel and the ten tribes to the north. But Ahaz and the house of David and little Judah was still standing. Now, what do the Jewish sages believe about Isaiah 7, 14? They believe that the son spoken of in Isaiah 7, 14 was not necessarily the Messiah, but was Ahaz's upcoming son, Hezekiah. And of course, King Hezekiah is a prominent figure in the Old Testament. Of course, we believe that this was not just talking about Hezekiah. This was talking about God's eternal son. This was talking about the eternal son of David, that the house of David would bring forth the Lord Jesus Christ. He would be their true salvation, not Hezekiah. Now look at, at the screen. Look at Isaiah chapter 8. Verse 8, he will stretch out his wings. He will fill the breadth of your land, O Emmanuel. And verse 10, here's the definition, for God is with us. By the way, that's the two times that John was talking about that it's found in the Old Testament. In the very next chapter, however, Isaiah adds this. We've heard this before, have we not? For unto us a child is born, Isaiah 9, 6. Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Folks, that cannot just be about Ahaz's son, Hezekiah. There has to be a greater fulfillment of this. And sure enough, God protected the house of David for a greater reason, to be able to send his son, to be able to send Jesus, to be able to send Emmanuel in order that God be with us. We sang it a while ago, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. And then in Matthew 21, the angel said to Joseph these words, and she, talking about Mary, will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Yeshua. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. What prophet, church? Isaiah. Isaiah 7:14 saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. John said that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. All three sections of the Tanakh, the Jewish Bible, which is our Old Testament, recorded and declared that Messiah was coming someday in the Torah, in the law. Moses declared in Deuteronomy 18 that someday a prophet who would be greater than himself would come on the scene. Who was that? The Muslims believe it was Muhammad. We absolutely believe that that certainly was the Lord Jesus Christ. Jacob declared in Genesis 49 that the Messiah called Shiloh, we say Shiloh in Hebrew, Shiloh or Shiloh, will emerge through his fourth son, Judah. And Jesus came from that line and that lineage. In the Nevim, the prophets 
Micah said in chapters 4 and 5 that he would be born at the tower of the flock, Migdali Dare, born in Bethlehem. Isaiah described in Isaiah 53 his substitutionary death and sacrifice for us. Zechariah predicted that he would humbly ride into Jerusalem on a donkey in Zechariah 9 and that the Jewish people would then look upon the one whom they pierced in chapter 12. What about the Ketvim, the writings of the Jewish Bible. The second psalm revealed that Messiah would be the Son of God and that He would be go through great suffering and great sacrifice for us in Psalm 22. It even revealed, Daniel chapter 9 reveals the exact timetable of Messiah's death. I think about old Simeon in the New Testament church. The Bible says in Luke 2, again look at the screen, Verse 25, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. What does that mean? He was waiting for Messiah to come. The Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ, the Messiah. It was after he held baby Jesus in his hands that he declared these words, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. Same word, Yeshua. My eyes have seen your Yeshua. My eyes have seen your salvation. By the way, so many Jewish people have not seen him which you prepared before the face of all peoples. Now listen, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. It literally breaks my heart, church, to think about all my Jewish friends that still have this longing and this aching and this searching in their heart and this hoping in their heart that someday Messiah would come. They don't realize that they've missed him. They don't realize that He's already come and that He's willing to be with them. He is Emmanuel. Jesus declared in Matthew 23, just before the cross, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. You would not believe. And then Jesus made this prophecy. See, your house is left to you desolate. Your temple will be destroyed soon. For I say to you, you shall see me no more until you say, Baruch haba Bashem Adonai. Until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. No wonder our messianic friends are so filled with joy. They're so filled with hope. They found him. They've found the Messiah. They know they have God dwelling and living within them. They have Emmanuel. But it also breaks my heart, church, and I hope your heart is broken too, about the vast number of people in our world that have no hope. They have no God with them. They have no Emmanuel. No Savior, no abundance, no joy, no victory. They're living in death. They're living in fear. They're living in darkness. That's why we give to missions. That's why our church is all about taking the gospel from the neighborhoods to the nations because we want everybody to find Emmanuel. We want everybody to find the God who can be with us. What does it mean by the way, church, this Christmas, that Jesus is Emmanuel. Let me give you eight quick truths, and these are all from the Scripture. These all talk to us about why He came and what it means that He's with us. He is Emmanuel. Why? Well, He's with us that He might, number one, pursue us. Look at these scriptures on the screen. John said, and this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation, the satisfactory payment for our sins. God came to us. He came after us. He's pursuing us, and He's pursuing you right now. You say, well, I don't know Jesus. I'm telling you, God's crazy about you, and He loved you so much, He's pursuing you because He sent His Son to die a terrible death on the cross that you might have eternal life. 
He's with us that He might pursue us. Secondly, He's with us that He might pardon us. Paul said, in Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. John again said, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because Jesus lives within me, I know that I have the promise of forgiveness of sins. There's nothing else that can forgive your sin. There's no one else that can forgive your sin. Only the Lord Jesus Christ. Only Emmanuel. God with us. God that came to visit us. God that is still with us to this day. Only He can pardon us. Oh, but He also came that He might purify us. Listen to what Paul said in Romans 8. Verse 10, I I can't achieve this on my own, by the way, church. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. He said to the church at Corinth, Therefore, beloved, having the promise of His presence within us, His presence within us, that's Emmanuel, His presence within us, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit and holiness and in the fear of God. Oh, He is with us right now that He might pursue us, that He might come after us in order that we be saved, that He might pardon us and forgive us of our sin, that He might purify us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, but He also came that He might perfect us. Philippians 3, 12, not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I press on, Paul says, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. I'm not perfect. I've got a long way to go. Just ask my wife. (laughs) But listen, I'm headed toward it. I'm headed toward it. And every day I say, Lord, that I might... Yield, be filled, and be spilled for your glory. I want to be more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. He's with us. He's with us that we might, number five, that he might prepare us. Peter said, 1 Peter 5, 10, May the God of all grace, who called us to eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Well, we need that, don't we? In the midst of our uncertain day, in the midst of these shaky times, don't we need someone who is with us that is going to help us be established and help us to be strengthened and help us to be settled in our mind and in our heart? He's with us every step of the way. He's with us that He might also pray for us. Hebrews 7, 25, He always lives to make intercession for us. Did you know, church, that Jesus is praying for you right now? You say, well, nobody's praying for me. Nobody cares what I'm going through. I'm telling you, the Lord Jesus Christ is praying for you. Whatever valley you are walking through, He's praying for you right now. And praying that you will be strong and strong in mind and heart. Praying that you will, that that he can help you and strengthen you. I've been reading a little devotional book that was actually written by a Jewish rabbi. And uh, he's not a believer, but the book was not about that. The book was actually tracing the Judean prophets. And um, I was telling somebody a while ago... There are four things that the prophets of God would do every day. Now, this is a Jewish source, and he, he said, here are the four things that a prophet would do every day. Number one, they would wake up, and as soon as they, wake, they awoke, they would awake with the spirit of a lion. Secondly, they would wake up before dawn. That just takes about half our crowd out. <laughs> before coffee? <laughs> They would wake up before dawn. Thirdly, they would live in a spirit of thanksgiving. And fourthly, they would serve the Lord with joy and gladness. Is that not awesome? I said, Lord, every day I know you're praying for me. And I pray that I might wake up with a spirit of a lion, that I may wake up 
with before the dawn breaks to face the new day with courage and encouragement and thanksgiving in my heart, but also serving you with great joy in my life. He has come. He is with us that He might pray for us. He's also with us that He might protect us. 2 Thessalonians 3, 3, But the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Lord, guard me from the enemy. John, or Jesus said in John 10, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who's given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Hmm. He's also with us that He might present us someday to the Father. <laughs> Paul said this in Colossians 1.22, He has reconciled you in the body of His flesh through death. Why? To present you. To present you holy and blameless and above reproach in His sight. Folks, do you understand what Emmanuel means? He is with you and with me from start to finish. He is there to indwell us, to forgive us, to strengthen us, to defend us, to keep us, to guide us, to sustain us, and to get us home someday. He is the rock of our salvation. He is the anchor of our souls. Can, can we, I, I, I went through this for my quiet time this week. Can we, can we just... Listen to Psalm 103 for just a minute. Just, just let this speak to your spirit for a moment because Emmanuel is all over this. Listen to what David said. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. His benefits... Did you know, church, that the Lord has a pretty good benefit package? <laughs> you say, what are they, preacher? Well, listen. Listen. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagle's. He is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is His mercy toward those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far He has removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear Him. He knows our friends. He remembers that we are dust, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear Him. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen. Folks, Emmanuel is all over that. God is with us, and He's with you right now. I was telling Brother David Stepp, we're going to pray for him, by the way, at the end of the service today. David leaves for Mexico I said, David, you know you're not going down there by yourself. He, he initially said, well, I'm going by myself. I can't go this time. None of us can go. He's going to travel alone. No, the Lord's with you, David. <laughs> no matter where you go, you say, well, I'm all by myself. No, you aren't. No, you aren't. Emmanuel is there. The Lord is with us. Can we praise Him this morning? Look at the screen. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is Your name, Emmanuel, in all the earth. Those who know Your name, God with us, Emmanuel, will put their trust in You. For You, O oh Lord, have not forsaken those who seek You, Psalm 910. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together, Psalm 34, verse 3. Blessed is His glorious name, Emmanuel, God with us forever. And may the whole earth be filled with His glory, amen and amen, Psalm 72, 19. Isaiah 43, listen to what Isaiah says. But now thus says the Lord, 
Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Now listen to this, church. When you pass through the waters, what does it say? Emmanuel. When you pass through the waters... I'll be with you. God with us. When you're going through a hard time, I'll be with you. I'm not going to leave you or forsake you. I'm not going to go away somewhere. When you go through the waters, when you go through the difficult times, I'm going to be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire... You shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you, for I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Do you remember what Paul said to Timothy when everybody had deserted him and he wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy? Do you remember what Paul said? Look what he said in chapter 4, verse 6. But the Lord was with me. All alone in a Roman prison, subject to be executed, beheaded at any moment. Everybody else had left. No big fan club for the Apostle Paul. But you know what, Timothy? The Lord was with me. And He's never left me. I know you, Emmanuel. And I know you're with me. And you're with every person who is called on your name, the name of Jesus, the name of Emmanuel. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're faced with this Christmas, He is with you. I got a call this week from Atlanta from my former church. Wes and Janet Agnew, wonderful people in that church. In fact, Wes was our business administrator. I hired him in 2002 as our business administrator. And he's been there ever since, even while I've been here. He's been there at Jonesboro a long time. Great businessman. And Wes and Janet's 35-year-old son died this week. I called Wes up and I said, Wes, I don't even know what to say to you. I don't even know the pain that you are feeling right now. I I knew Carter when he was a little boy. I wrote down, after our conversation, I wrote down, tried to remember as best I could what Wes said to me. Here's a gist of what he said. Our hearts have a tremendous hole in them right now. The sting and emotional roller coaster is almost too hard to imagine. We are holding... Listen... We are holding on to God's presence, His strength, and His comfort. And buddy, He's holding on to you all as well. And He's with you because He is Emmanuel. I preached a message for our sister Kathy this week. Mike, blessings on you, buddy. We're praying for you. Mike told me earlier in the week, I hope it's all right for me to say this today, Mike. He said, I've lost my best friend. But I told him, I said, Mike, the Lord's with you. Listen to me, church. Some of you are going through some things that nobody else knows about. They may be internal things. And you've not voiced it to anybody else. But can I just tell you right now, The Lord's with you. That's Emmanuel. He's with you. And oh, how I pray that you can sense His strength and His comfort. He is Emmanuel when we go through sorrow and grief and heartache. He is Emmanuel when we go through rejection and scorn. He is Emmanuel when we go through pain and suffering and sickness. 
He is Emmanuel when we walk through the storms of life. He is Emmanuel when we take our final breath on this earth. At all times, in all places, in every circumstance, Emmanuel, God is with us. Joy to the Lord. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. And He didn't come to leave us. He's hanging around through the power of His Holy Spirit to help us through. We thank Him now and forever for what He's done. By the way, one more thing, church, before we close out today. Matthew's Gospel, Matthew 1, starts out with Emmanuel, God with us. You know what? It records the last words of Jesus in Matthew 28. Do you remember what Jesus said? Lo, I am with you always. I am Emmanuel, and I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. Regardless of what you're facing this Christmas, Jesus, Emmanuel, is with us. He's with you every day.